So this is a quick update with the uh, CNC machine in SOLIDWORKS. And over the weekend, I put together a table and an enclosure. So we'll just look at that stuff now. So the, the table, which is right here. So I plan on welding this together, TIG welding, and except for this one here. So this tube right here, uh, it's gonna be bolted together that way in case I want to do something with the machine itself, uh, I don't want that tube getting in the way. So I can, if it's bolted in there, it's easy to remove. The CNC machine itself will be all bolted together. And I have the table recessed a bit. So the CNC machine, it kind of sits on these lower ones in here. Uh, I might change that, I don't know. And also you can see now that the uh, the table is it's open on the bottom. I don't know if that's a good or bad idea right now. I haven't really given it too much thought. I thought that if uh, uh, if it's open like that, it'll be a lot easier to clear all the chips because they're just gonna fall on the ground. And I think it'll be easier to clean up that stuff on the ground versus trying to get in there with a vacuum cleaner and getting all the stuff out from inside the case. The top enclosure part, uh, this, See the uh, the door. So here's the door. This thing will rotate up like so. Uh, this square here, I'm planning on putting a piece of polycarbonate in there, and the rest of it, all the other sides, everywhere else is just going to be sheet metal. Uh, let me know if you think that's a good idea or a bad idea. Uh, I prefer just to go with all steel versus having uh, other stuff like wood in there. Uh, let me just close this. And what I plan on doing is having some of those like hydraulic helpers on the side, just so when you lift up the door, the thing just it's not going to fall on you afterwards. Uh, so the table is the table in the closure everything is centered around the machine so if we look from the top there's there's an equal side around this i think it's enough not really like it it seems like when i move everything around it looks like everything kind of fits well and yeah i put in these uh the cable chains put those in just because it's just to just to see if they're gonna fit and whatnot um the tubing, so the legs on this is three by three steel and everything else on the table is two by three. And I also have uh, these guys in here, these gussets, and I have the gussets everywhere just to increase the uh, the strength of the table. Don't really think it's going to be that too, much, too important, but put them in anyway. I also have them on the enclosure as well. And the the uh, the enclosure part, I have that. So the dimensions is midway between the two by three steel of the table. And what I plan on doing is having some little tabs in the corners to keep it uh, locked in place. And I might bolt it down with some. Uh, some little like L brackets, but we'll see about that. Uh, what else? I can show you the, uh, if you're using SolidWorks and you, you want to put something together like these uh, cable chains, I'll just quickly show how I do that. So let me just grab one of these. Let me close some of this stuff up. So take uh Take one of these. So it's an assembly. So here it is right here. And the way this works is, well, you model one, you, you model one of the chain links. You also model each end. And then in here, the pattern is the chain pattern. And what's important to do here is to make sure that you have connected linkages set up. The other ones in this case are not going to work for a cable chain. And another big thing is the ch the chain sketch. So this part here, 
this has to be in its own sketch. It can't be in the assembly because what you want to do is you want to have this piece moving uh, from your main top level assembly. And then this is going to be driving uh, this assembly, which is the, the cable chain sub assembly. And everything else uh, mate wise, uh, this piece here should be locked to the assembly itself. Uh, and then this is really the only piece that should be floating. And, and let me just close this. So when you're back in the main assembly and this piece is moving like so, uh, it's not actually attached to the gantry uh, in, uh, in the way that uh, the gantry is, in the way that they, like the, the end of it is driving the gantry in any way. If you do that, what will happen is the uh, mates in SOLIDWORKS, they're going to mess up and uh, the table, the gantry is just not going to move whatsoever. So the, the gantry always has to be driving this piece and uh, you cannot have like a cycle in any way. And when, uh, when this top piece moves back and forth, what you have to do is use a linear to linear coupler and I'll just show you what the settings are on this. Uh, the, well, it switched to inches on me, but it wasn't centimeters. But what, what the uh, ratio is, is a two to one. So when, uh, when the gantry is moving, you want the, that assembly to be moving half as speed. And then that way it will sync up and it'll, it'll move such as that. Otherwise, you'll get a double transformation. Uh, so I think that's it with the table. Uh, I'm going to start welding this thing soon. I have most of the other parts uh, already. And if you see, if you have any suggestions on things that I should change, especially with the inside of the table area, uh, if I should have it open or closed, and what are your thoughts on using sheet metal on the sides? And also the, uh, these metal tubes here, this is uh, three quarter inch steel. Uh, because it's not really, it doesn't need to be very uh, strong. It just has to be able to hold itself up. And these little gussets here, I think the little gussets on the uh, the enclosure are probably the biggest thing, the most important thing versus the table, uh, just because uh, like it's not, there, you're going to get a lot of cantilever kind of motion if if this thing is all apart. So I think they're going to really help with the table, the the. Uh, enclosure. So that's what I have. Let me know and talk to you later.